All right, so the word of the Lord to us in the month of November is the surge. Can somebody say the surge? And what we are emphasizing in this month is a dimension of supernatural power that God wants us to practically and individually experience. The whole idea here is that we have heard of power, we have seen, we have read of power, but in this season, God is raising us up a notch to a place where we are now the custodians, the ones who are experiencing this power. And it is my prayer that even with all of what is going on around you, you will not spectate, but you will be a partaker in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you believe that we may want you to say, this is my month of the supernatural. Come on, say it like you believe it. This is my month of the supernatural. Glory to God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. I'm being very mindful of our time. Um, so that we can round up when we are meant to round up. He says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. True is spirit who dwells in you. Is that in your Bible? Hello? Is that in your Bible? So it tells us that this life, this particular life we are talking about, not only strengthens your inner man, the strength in your inner man, and I know... Should I do a quiz? You know, when I was doing online only, I would probably squeeze it and say, if someone gets it, I'll give them a prize. So now there are people in the room, and they can get the prize. So should we do the quiz? But we don't even have time. We don't have time. Uh, <laughs> praise God. All right. So we, we talked about the we, we talked about a couple of teachings ago. I'm, I'm not sure what year now. Uh, we were talking about the, the root words for power. We talked about the words for authority. I know that is still fresh because we discussed that in 2020. So that's not the quiz. For those of you who say, I know power is dynamis, authority is exousia, that's not where we are going. All right. We also talked about the words for strength. And we talked about strength in your spirit, strength in your soul, and then strength in your body. So that is the quiz. Anybody knows? Yeah, you see, you see why you should have just allowed us to go. <laughs> Praise God. We come, I'm going to give you a gift. It has to be worth it, man. I'm not about to give you a quarter or a dollar. Solid, solid gift. Praise God. Someone could have just won a hundred dollar gift card, just like that. If there's someone online that types the correct answer, let me know. But they have Google, you don't. So it's closed. Glory to God. <laughs> All right. So what Paul is saying here, now back to this scripture, what Paul is saying here is that the Strength. Now, we didn't break this down in the first service. Let me say this for those who have waited till now. The energy supplied by God's Spirit has a direct way to supply strength to your spirit. And the strength of your spirit. Many times when we pray and when we read scriptures like praying in the Holy Ghost, building up that edifice, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in all, with all manner of prayers, what is happening is that there is an edifice that is rising. The strength, the stature of your spirit man, which is why you can have a 16-year-old who is a giant in the spirit and you can have a 60-year-old who is a toddler in the spirit. It's how much stamina has been built up. Now, what the scripture is saying is that beyond that spirit being the one receiving the benefits of that impartation, he's saying that there is such a surge that can transcend your mind that that power can begin to ooze through your body. Through your mortal bodies. I know, you know why I love this scripture? He could have just said through your bodies and they will now go and say, he was not really talking about body. He, was, he said mortal body, so you know it's this body. That there is something that can happen from deep inside that it can affect what this mortal body experiences. And it is my prayer that you will be a partaker of the fullness of that power. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know in the early, in the early first service we were talking about how Elijah carried a grace. He communicated all of that grace to Elisha in double measure. And there was no one for Elisha to communicate it to. And then it, it rested with him in his bones. That his bones was one out doing exploits. Hmm. But the point here is, you remember Jesus was walking in the middle of a crowd because someone will look at that story, a bit of a digression, and would say, why didn't Elisha find someone else? To try? Even if it's not going to be double portion. Even if it's not the double you received, at least the one you got from Elijah. Half portion, right? 
give it to some give it to somebody and this is this is i i i want to say i don't know why but i know why i'm digressing the moment you see a grace that you know god wants you to tap into if you don't go after it it will not fall on you so somebody just needed to hear that jesus was moving with the crowd even his own disciples that were touching him eating from the same plate they didn't tap something so jesus turns around and says somebody touched me i'm sure his disciples laughed they said you've got jokes but this is a new level of joke how can you say who told you? I don't know. Can you imagine it? Everybody is bumping into each other. I know in this age of physical distance, you can't even imagine seeing people. But you've, you've been seeing pictures of people in different places and protest ground gathering together. So everybody is just into one another. And everybody is touching Jesus. The point here is everybody can be touching a grace but not receiving that grace. Jesus says something left. So Elisha, I'm just telling you, Elisha had people who could get it. They just didn't want it. Praise God. Praise God. Now, every account of resurrection in scripture involves someone who died, rose up again, and died again. Jesus is the firstborn of those who died, live again, only never to die again. Are you still with me this morning? And we see all through scripture, from the old covenant prophecies into the new covenant full picture of Ex, ex, examples, numerous examples of resurrection taking place. Now, many people find it difficult to wrap their minds around the concept of life being supplied to something that's been dead. But we find all through the pages of scripture, Isaiah 26 verse 19. For those who may not know the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees as scholarly, as technical, as deep as they are, in fact, they, part of the requirements to belong into that elite group is knowing the law and the prophets and the psalms by heart. Imagine such a level of, 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 I don't know if you call it intelligence, because intelligence that does not help you is not intelligence. Intelligence that does not produce results is not intelligence. Knowing prophecy, and you are seeing the Messiah in your front, and you can't discern him, that I can't count that as intelligence. But they never could agree on the fact that resurrection was possible. That was the main difference between them. Isaiah shows us, Isaiah 26 verse 19. We'll pick a few scriptures just to read because of our time. Isaiah 26 19, it says, your dead shall live. Together with my dead, this, the, the Sadducees knew this prophecy by heart. And they still chose not to believe that resurrection was possible. It says, awake and sing, you will dwell in dust. For your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Speaking prophetically of a time when resurrection will be made possible. Somebody say glory to God. Job chapter 19, 25 to 26. Job also tells us that this is a possibility. 2 Kings 13, 21 tells us there was a band that was raiding. And they, 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 so some people were on the way to bury a guy. Just said, where can we throw him? They threw him in the very wrong place. In the tomb of Elisha, he came in contact with that grace. Life was restored back to him. In the old covenant. In the old covenant. Come on, child of God. Don't allow anybody to convince you that there's no power. Did you hear me? Don't allow them to convince you. They can bring books and bring theories. They can bring tapes and show you tapes and tapes. All these things that inspire you, they are staged. Even the ones you respect, also they are staged. Never get to the point where you agree with the enemy that power does not exist. In this kingdom, our currency is power. Yes, our being born again was, in, was an act of power. Your salvation was an act of power. So I, can't, I cannot accept the lie that power does not exist. It is my prayer that you will be proof. You will be proof of God's supernatural power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, someone didn't receive that. I said your life will be a living proof that God's supernatural power still exists. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I need to rephrase that. Somebody here, your mortal body needs to feel something. It needs to feel a surge. So I speak to that body. I don't know what part you need a touch on. It might be your eyes. It might be the brain. It might be the lungs. It might be any part of your body. I pray. And I speak now. I release the anointing and the grace of God over that part of your body. That there will be a surge. And that that mortal body will experience resurrection power. In the mighty name of Jesus. For anyone who feels like the widow in Luke chapter 7 verse 12 to 14. And you are watching your only hope gone. 
That was the only job. That was how I survived. That was the only, the, the only way I saw a breakthrough. Guess what? That is not the end. There is resurrection power available. And it is my prayer that what you are planning to close off, God says don't close it off yet. I have not closed it, so don't close it. Well, like God, we are done. He says, I'm not done. Maybe you are done, but I am not done. I am bringing life back to that scenario. And I speak that life will be supplied in that area. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's another story, Mark chapter 5, verse 39 to 42, tells us about a young girl, a 12-year-old girl, who the enemy had seen her future and taught it wise to cut her short. The Bible tells us Jesus got to the place and told them, excuse me, excuse me, the girl is only sleeping. People who were mourning began to smile. If they were even smiling, it would have been good. They were laughing. It was not laugh of, Jesus is funny. It was a laugh of ridicule. We even considered you a prophet. Can't you, you don't have to tell when someone is dead. Check the pulse. Check the heartbeats. Check all the checkables. It's probably beginning to get cold. But Jesus came there and he spoke the word. That same word is alive this morning. And that same word is released into every situation in your life that has received a death sentence. We come to release a new sentence because the judge of the old earth, he will judge righteously and his verdict is life. Therefore, we release life into that situation that the enemy has spoken death to. We cancel that sentence. We cancel that decree. And we release a new lease of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. John 11, 43 and 44. Jesus standing at the tomb of Lazarus. He had to call his first name. Like a, a friend said, if he had just said, come forth, all the graves would have been rattling. So Jesus said, let's stream, let's, stream line, let's stream line this. Lazarus. So that just kept all the other graves in check. Come forth. And there was a rattling. If Jesus, the son of God, had stood and said, come forth. Guess what? Everything. Everywhere. Do you know it happened? We didn't read this in the morning. Matthew chapter 20. This is your Bible. Matthew 27. Let's read this one. As it begins. I don't know where the time is jumping to today. Because I mean, I, I read the testimonies fast this time. So what happened? <laughs> Matthew 27, 50 to 53. Let's read. No, this one, you'll read it. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Let's go on. It says, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from... How many people are familiar with verse 50? Everybody, right? How many people are familiar with this verse? We know, right? The one that we are not very familiar with. Give us the next one. And the graves were opened. Not when Jesus rose again. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Guys, there's power. I don't know about you, but there's power. Give us verse 53. There's power. There's power. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So, verified proof that it really happened. It really happened. I pray for someone here. The verification of that miracle will be by heaven. The authorization is released already. Heaven has sealed it. It is verified. Very soon I'm going to read a testimony. As I'm reading it, even me I'll be stammering. People will email us to verify. They will say, PD, you went to school, you have an education. The least you can do is to verify this. And I will tell them, come and see what the Lord has done for us. Come and see what the Lord has done for us. Come and see what the Lord has done for us. It is marvelous in our sight. Hmm. 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 Can we just can we just wrap up here? Come and see what the Lord has done for us. Come and see. People will say it can be true. 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 But God did it. It can be true. But God did it. It can be true. But God did it. Because the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that same spirit dwells on my inside. I know I got some quick thing to do, but I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive that power this morning. 
I'm ready to be charged up. I'm ready to bring power to my world. I'm ready to be the conduit of heaven. I'm ready to be the conduit of heaven. I'm ready to get up from my sleep and arise in the place and in the posture of prayer to begin to make much power available. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see the dead rising. Come and see the blind seen. Come and see the lame walking. In our days, in our times. In our days, in our times. In our days, in our times. For with God, nothing, 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 nothing. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. He says, You're the great and mighty God. Great in counsel and mighty indeed. Mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for him. Come on, just put your right hand on your head and say, Father, fill me like never before with your power. I want to carry on common grace. This is my month of the supernatural. Let it not be business as usual. In the first service, we agreed on a surge challenge that we'll find someone. Jesus said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we broke that down. It means the spirit is ready. It's ready to be charged. It's ready to be plugged in. The world needs power. The world needs supply of this of this grace that we carry. But if the battery is dead, we can't bring any flavor. If the salt has lost its taste, it's of no good. If the, if the light is dim or the bulb is dead, then there's no illumination. It looks like we're in a dark world. It looks like we're in a tasteless world. It's time for salt to arise. It's time for lights to shine. It's time for power to begin to surge. It's time for power to begin to surge. Father, we, your children, receive a fresh deposit of power. That as we stir it up in the place of prayer, we begin to see the supernatural. We begin to see the supernatural. We begin to experience the impossible. What men said was impossible. What doctors said was impossible. What our lawyers said was impossible. What the experts had written of. This same year that people have canceled. The year of your power. The year of our shining. Thank you, Father, for a release of these deposits. Thank you for a supply of your spirit. Thank you because we go in your presence and we begin to stir it up. We begin to stir it up. Some of you, the spirit of God, just trust me. This does not mean this is how it's always going to be. But in this season, the spirit of God might mess up your sleep. It might mess up your schedule. Allow him. There's something stirring up. Something stirring up. When this power comes, you will tell him, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I wouldn't have had it any other way. It will be a blessing not just to you, but to a generation. And I want you to stretch your faith. You are looking at yourself and say, what can God do with me? What really can God do with just me? And God says, you just surrender and see what I can do with you. You just surrender and you will see what I can do with you. I know I'm raising an army, but I'm gunning for you. I'm raising an army, but I'm gunning for you. That's a word for someone. I'm raising an army, but I'm gunning for you. He says, you surrender. You surrender. You surrender. And see what I can make of your life. See what beauty. For God is able to do just what he says he will do. Bring it up a bit. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Child of God, don't give up on God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he won't give up on you. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Child of God, don't give up on God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he won't give up on you. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Child of God, don't give up on God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he won
is able. As we round up, I want to pray for two categories of people. The first group, you feel like that we do. Your hope is gone. Or you feel like Mary and Martha. You were sure if there's anybody Jesus will attend to, it is you. You are not like those who are not born again. You know you have a relationship with Jesus. It doesn't make sense that he has not shown up. It doesn't make sense. You watch things go from bad to worse. From worse to worst. From worst to dead. From dead to buried. From buried to stinking. And then Jesus now shows up. You're like, you should have come earlier. He says, I'm never late. 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 Or you're under the sound of my voice, you know you're not even born again. You know there is no relationship. You see the chaos around you and you hear that there's power available. I want to pray with you. Father, for your children, this is your word to us. That you are releasing uncommon power to us as a people in the month of November. We are ready. Everything that has resisted, everything that has fought back, this stamina and strength that we've given to our flesh in a way that it is pushing back on the anointing of your spirit. Father, by your grace, that flesh is crucified. Every way we fed it, we've inspired it, we've trained it, we've equipped it to our detriment. We cut off all such supplies and we plug into your spirit. We receive power as from on eye. Let there be a mighty wind of your spirit. There's someone here, the Lord says, watch out this night. He says your curtains will be closed but there will be a heavy blowing. He says there's going to be a transfer. There's going to be a transfer. And you stir it up. That's the right response. You stir it up. For another person to be in the dream, you will be asleep and there will be a deposit. Somebody you know will bring you a meal. Eat it. I'm saying this publicly because there's this funny thing about eating in the dream. The Lord says he's bringing you a meal. Eat this one. You will wake up a changed person. You wake up a changed person. Father, for those who are making a decision for Jesus, acknowledging their sin and their need for a Savior, I ask, Father, for a communication of life as they acknowledge their old ways, a need for you, as they reckon in the finished work of Christ that He came, He really came, took their place. He died, He really died, He was buried. But the grave could not hold him. He's alive, very much alive today. Ready to live through us. Express his will. Establish his kingdom. I ask that these ones will be a part of a great army. They themselves will bring many to salvation. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Come on, if you believe that God has done it, I want you to jam those hands together and give the Lord a